A dictator for a day. Donald Trump in Iowa last night offered ample op offered ample opportunity by a friendly host and audience to make clear he won't lean into his authoritarian tendencies if he wins the election. An opportunity that Trump took and did this. Do you in any way have any plans whatsoever, if re-elected president, to abuse power, to break the law, to use the government to go after people? You mean like they're using right now? Also, in all of that, asked about being a dictator. We will get to more of that in a moment. Politico's take on it all, a presidential frontrunner idly musing about being a dictator, even for a day, is not normal stuff. Also not normal is this, a former vice president possibly testifying against his former boss who is facing multiple indictments for trying to steal an election that he wa lost while he's currently running for president again. All of that to say, prosecutors in Georgia have now put Mike Pence on their witness list in the state's 2020 election subversion case. One has to wonder if any or all of this will come up in the presidential debate tonight for Republican presidential candidates taking the stage in another face-off, again not on the list, will be, of course, the frontrunner, Donald Trump, skipping it again while he remains 50-plus points ahead in the polls for the Republican nomination. CNN's Elena Treen leads us off. Elena, take us to last night to understand where we are today. What happened in this interview? Uh, yeah, well, I, I think you showed some of that clip earlier, Kate, where Sean Hannity tried a few times to get Donald Trump to deny that if he were elected in 2024 to the White House, that he would not abuse presidential power. He would not use the government to go after his political enemies. But Donald Trump did not take the opportunity to do that. Here's more of that exchange. Under no circumstances, you are promising America tonight you would never abuse power as retribution against anybody. Except for day one. Yeah. Except Look, one? He's going crazy. Except for day one. Meaning? I want to close the border, and I want to drill, that's drill, not a, that's, drill. That's, that's, he says, you're not going to be a dictator, are you? I said, no, 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 other than day one. We're closing the border, and we're drilling, drilling, drilling. After that, I'm not a dictator, so that, okay? That now, to put it bluntly, Kate, I mean, it was a bit of a weird answer. I agree with Politico on that. I mean, Donald Trump has completely or completely deflected last night from answering that question. Instead, he joked about being a dictator and tried to flip the script and put it on Joe Biden, arguing that Biden is the one abusing his power and pointing to the four indictments that Trump is facing. But look, I think it, we need to be very clear here. Donald Trump has said publicly, both on the campaign trail, but also in his interviews, that he would try to weaponize the Justice Department to go after his uh, enemies. And I think, you know, a lot of this is coming as there's intense media scrutiny on what a Trump second term would look like. And a lot of these plans that we've reported on and other outlets have reported on um, are plans that the campaign doesn't deny. Now, I do think the reason there is so much attention around what an expansive second term could look like is not necessarily because Trump's rhetoric is increasing on this. Uh, this is really the same language that he's been using since he announced that he was going to run for election last year. Um, but it's because we are six weeks away to the Iowa caucuses and Donald Trump still has a commanding lead in the polls. And that's led a lot of people, Republicans, Democrats, critics, to wonder what exactly would a second Trump administration look like. Elena, good to see you. Thank you. John. All right, with me now is former Obama administration official Van Jones and David Urban, Republican strategist and former Trump campaign advisor. They are both CNN political analysts. And with me here in studio, Van, I want to replay the initial question from Sean Hannity, just so we're all crystal yeah. clear. Okay, pretty, pretty simple question, brother. Pretty simple question from a guy who, you know, isn't really trying to expose yes. the former president here. Let's listen. Do you in any way have any plans whatsoever, if re-elected president, to abuse power, to break the law, to use the government to go after people? Do you have any plans to <laughs> abuse power, break the law, or go after people? And here's the thing, Van, yeah. we timed it. Hmm. He didn't answer that question for five minutes. For five wow. minutes, he obfuscated 
didn't give a yes or a no for five minutes. And when he finally did answer, the answer was dictator on day one. Yeah, it's, it's, what do you hear there? Well, I mean, in some ways, it's kind of like the, the, the guy at Ellis Island. They say, do you advocate supporting, uh, overthrowing the government by force or violence? And he goes, violence, right? <laughs> this is like, this is a very easy question. It's a simple yes or no question. And there was an opportunity to, to set the record straight, to tell people, I do not plan to do this. I plan to follow the law. I plan. He didn't do it. There's not a single human being on earth that would take more than five seconds to answer a question like that the right way. He couldn't get it right in five minutes. And, and David, I want to make clear, this isn't a complete vacuum when it comes to Trump himself or the people he has surrounded himself with, including Kash Patel, who worked in the last administration. I know you know Kash Patel. Uh, the New York Times noted today that in an interview with Steve Bannon, Patel said, quote, we will go out and find the conspirators, not just in the government, but in the media. Yes, we're going to come after the people in the media who lied about American citizens, who helped Joe Biden rig presidential elections. We're going to come after you, whether it's criminally or civilly. Yeah, it's nuts, right? It's, it's crazy. And I, and I can tell you firsthand that I know that the Trump campaign and the inner circle of the Trump campaign, which Cash Patel is not part of, is none too happy with those comments, right? Because they're, they're indefensible, right? They're just clearly indefensible. And, and so to, uh, to, you know, to, to be out there saying that, it, it, there, there's no way you can respond to it other than say it, it's just wrong, right? I mean, what he's saying is wrong. Well, well, um, well you'll say that and the campaign will say that. Unfortunately, the candidate won't well, say well, that. That's, I mean, that's the problem. You know, right? and, and to your point about what, what, what the former president said last night to Hannity, look, Hannity w w kind of twisted his arm a little bit and saying, you know, say, say uncle, say uncle, Donald Trump. <laughs> And Donald Trump, you know this, Van knows this, when Trump gets pushed in a corner, he's not going to admit that he's wrong. He's not going to say that I did something wrong or said something wrong. He said, look, I'll be a dictator in so much as that I am going to close the border, in so much that I am going to drill. If those things are being a dictator, then I'm guilty of being a dictator. Th that was his answer. It was not an artful answer. He was being too cute by half. That was after five no, minutes no, of not it. promising listen, he wouldn't abuse he was, power. He was being too cute by half. And, and look... Uh, as we get closer and closer to the election, it's going to be more scrutiny. The only person that's going to beat Donald Trump in this election is Donald Trump. Not Joe Biden, not Nikki Haley. Donald Trump's the only guy that can beat himself. How should voters interpret this? I mean, how seriously should they take this? I think when somebody tells you who they are, you should believe them. Uh, this is a, I think people forget uh, a democratic republic. Uh, it's the most rare form of government in human history. You got 10,000 years of human history. Ours is the oldest. It's a couple hundred years old. What does that tell you? These things fall apart all the time. The usual thing, a strong man comes on the scene and you don't have a democracy anymore. That's happening in countries around the world. It could happen here. He's trying to be cute. He's trying to be clever. That's what his people who like him think. But if you had somebody who was in a position of power, was your boss or your, your, your clergy member, whatever, who talked about power the way he does, you'd be very concerned. You should be concerned about America today. So Liz, go ahead. Yeah, I was going to say, Selena Zito, my friend, remember, had this, coined this phrase, right, which is very, very popular during the 2016 campaign. You know, Trump supporters take him um, uh, seriously, but not literally. His detractors take him literally, but not seriously. I think you're seeing more of that today. Yeah, but do you think that still holds after he's been in office for four years? Because Liz Cheney, by the way, Liz Cheney distinctly doesn't. The Atlantic doesn't. Other people have been talking about that this week. I want to play about a little bit of Liz Cheney from last night, because what she seems to be saying is, we don't have the luxury, she says, of taking literally or seriously. Sure. We have to pay attention because it's different this time. Listen. I think it's naive um, and a real misreading of what we've lived through to think that we can count on the guardrails that we have in place. Donald Trump tried to seize power in 2020. He's learned the lessons uh, of 2020 and 2021. And so I think anybody who says, well, don't worry, you can count on the balance of power and the institutions, um, that's really wishful thinking that we can't afford. Dan? Uh, oh, she's right. Any job you have, you're a little bit better uh, the second day than you are the first, or the second year than you are the first, the second time than you are the first. The first time Donald Trump got there, he didn't think he was going to win in the first place. He had a campaign team, a very small one. He didn't have a governing you know, capacity. Now he knows how this thing works. And a lot of the marbles that people put on the stairs for him, a lot of the banana peels people put on the sidewalk for him, those people are not going to be there. And they're going to be people who actually expect to be able to deliver on some of these, com these promises. And I think people should take it very seriously. He will, it, it won't just be uh, this kind of circus type of thing. He's got to come in there with a disciplined plan to do a lot of stuff that could hurt a lot of people.